Hello, my name is Amazon, and this is Mons Guy to Talk for Wednesday, 22nd of February 2023. This is our first proper episode in a long, long time. We've got lots to talk about in today's episode, including Oppo's global variant of its folding, foldable, or flip phone, let's just say the Find N2 Flip, along with Huawei showing off a new smartwatch with earbuds included. This is pretty interesting, you don't want to miss that. Uh, a look at some new phones coming out next week at Mobile World Congress, and we have details about some upcoming gadgets that are definitely worth listening about. Uh, plus, we're going to talk a bit about folks using chat GPT to write children's novels and self-help books. Is it a worthwhile side hustle or really another fad of the AI hype that we're currently going through? Listen till the end to find out. All right, let's get rolling, shall we? First up, Oppo. Uh, they've unveiled the global variant of the Oppo Find N2 Flip, which they revealed in China a few months back. It's their take on the popular Galaxy Z Flip 4. It's a folding flip phone uh, which features a 6.8 inch FHD plus 120Hz AMOLED inner display with a 3.26 inch outer display. It's basically a rectangular sort of uh, screen to the left of the outer surface on the outside sort of when you use the phone itself. It's one of the larger outer screens on a folding flip phone, substantially larger than the Galaxy Z Flip 4. It's got the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 Plus chip, along with 8GB of RAM, 256GB of storage, a 4300mAh battery with 44W fast charging, 50MP main camera, 8MP ultra-wide uh, camera on the back of the phone, as always, a 32MP uh, front selfie camera for those crispy selfies, because, you know, Oppo is all about those crispy selfies, all jokes aside. Speaking of cameras, the thing, uh, one good thing about the Find N2 Flip, like the Find N series of phones, is that it comes with, uh, the phone comes with Oppo's very own uh, NPU, imaging NPU, which is the Maricon Silicon, the Mary Silicon X NPU image processor, uh, which helps with taking uh, better photos in general, which is pretty cool to think about. Interesting bits of the Find N2 uh, Flip, it's kind of, let's just call it an N2 Flip for simplicity's sake, uh, are Oppo's own Flexon hinge made of quote-unquote aircraft grade steel and polymer with a crease depth of less than 0.15 millimeters uh, and is durable after, and get this, 400,000 folds, which is around basically 10 years of use, which is pretty surprising. There's also the software features including a wide range of widgets on the hour display, uh, on the outer screen, let's just say that, and modes just like the Z Flip 4 on the inside. Like, for example, you have keep your phone at a 45 degree angle, and uh, the bottom part of the screen will let you be at the shutter button, let's just say. It's like the Z Flip 4, if you know those features to start with. What I like about the N N2 Flip, as we'll call it, is that 3.26 inch hour display. It You will get lots of curious looks, and I think that's a good thing in a way, along with that Dimensity 9000 Plus chip. I mean, um, again, I haven't used a phone with MediaTek chips, so I can't tell you how good it is, but again, should do the trick uh, nonetheless. Uh, now, the phone is launching first in Europe. In fact, uh, Oppo has become a sponsor of the FA Champions League, and they're prominently uh, marketing the phone around that, which is pretty cool. I mean, uh, Real Madrid bet, beat Liverpool last night, and that was shocking, and uh, that's so. that's that. Uh, anyways... Uh, the phone will cost around a thousand euros starting in various markets or around 849 pounds in the UK and will be available and go on sale from March the 1st. I'll link the Amazon listing in the UK uh, on in my show notes so you can check it out if you want to buy the phone from there. Uh, that is, it's unlocked so that's something to keep in mind. If you're familiar with Oppo's Color OS, which is their skin of Android in general, uh, this one really is worth checking out. Moving on to Huawei, they've launched a new smartwatch called the Huawei Watch Buds. As in the name, the interesting twist, and get this, is it's a smartwatch with TWS wireless earbuds. It's a typical good smartwatch with health tracking and the like, but with a press of a dial, a press of a button below the screen dial. It's a little button kind of, uh, it pops open and you get access to your wireless earbuds. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, for the smartwatch bit, you get a 1.43 inch AMOLED round display with stainless steel casing and 22 millimeter leather strap attached to it. It comes with heart rate and blood oxygen or SpO2 tracking along with ECG readings uh, from the get-go. But as I said, uh, on the other hand, 
The earbuds are quite compact and come with uh, gesture controls and AI powered noise cancelling for calls. Uh, the watch buds come with a combined three day battery life and up to four hours of music playback uh, on the buds itself. The wearable works with iOS and Android in case you're wondering and you can pre-order it in the UK if you obviously live in England for 449 British pounds uh, and will be available on March the starting March the 1st. It's not every day you see such a fascinating product but it's on the high end but as I said it's quite a nifty gadget to be fair. And now for things you might have missed in the world of Android. Firstly, Realme has teased the fast charging on its new uh, Realme GT phone that will be shown off next week at Mobile World Congress. The phone will come with 240 watt fast charging allowing you to charge it from zero to full in just, get this, 9 minutes and 37 seconds. Speaking of Mobile World Congress uh, 2023, it's happening next week and again we're going to have a whole episode of all new phones that have come out at the event uh, so don't miss that and again subscribe if you want to listen to next week's episode. On the other hand, OnePlus uh, will be showing off its OnePlus 11 concept at the event. And they've posted some photos of it. Uh, it was literally the OnePlus 11 with its glass back containing icy blue pipelines. These are like, you know, LEDs, a string of LEDs on the back, like the Nothing Phone 1. It, it looks cool, and as I said, it's awfully similar to Nothing Phone 1. On to foldables, the most exciting part of smartphones these days, huh? Uh, tipster. Ice Universe on Twitter has stated that the upcoming Z Flip 5 could pack a bigger hour display uh, uh, when you compare it really to Oppo's folding flip phone. While on the other hand, uh, famous leaker Ivan Blas on Twitter also posted uh, photos uh, showing the hour display of the 2023 Moto Razr, uh, showing sort of the surface kind of. And you, what you can see in the photos is the 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 hour display covers sort of the length of the of the surface, including around the cameras. So the cameras are sort of like cut out. So the display is cut out on the cameras. And that's pretty interesting. It's quite futuristic, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. It looks cool, to be honest, but it's uh, quite futuristic uh, nonetheless. 95 Google, uh, on the other hand, reports that the Pixel Fold will be a bit heavier than the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and will have dimensions of 140 millimeters in height but around 80 millimeters in width. It will come with a slightly bigger battery compared to its competitors. We don't know much other than these details, but as I said, uh, given what we're hearing, it's good to see that there's some much needed competition in the market. And as I said, more foldables, you know, and the more the merrier, as they say. So that's pretty cool uh, to talk about. And while we're already talking about leaks and rumors of phones, a tipster on Twitter has revealed that Samsung's looking to use the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, not the Gen 2, the 8 plus Gen 1 chip for the S23 FE, according to user Orexda, if you, this is how you pronounce it properly. The Galaxy S23 FE uh, could launch later in the second half of the year, and in fact, Samsung sort of, uh, discon planning to, is planning to discontinue one of their higher-end mid-range phones to get ready for the S23 FE. It's going to come out sort of, again, later in the year, probably after summer, like previous FE phones or fan edition phones. So that's something worth keeping in mind. All right, just before we move on to the next thing we want to talk about, Mercedes has uh, shown off some new features for their E-Class sedan, and you can extend that to the EQE, which is the electric version of their E-Class sedan. Uh, first up, uh, the EQE or the E-Class will be coming with 5G connectivity, depending on the package, of course. If you get a entertainment package, which is an option in the car, you can get 5G connectivity in the car itself, which is pretty awesome to start with. And along with that, it'll feature the final feature, the MBUX touchscreen that's been on the EQE and the E, uh, sorry, in the S class, the EQS and the S class has had this pretty funky uh, touchscreen display, the MBUX system. That's going to be on the E class cars now, including the electric version. Uh, so that's pretty cool. On top of that, it'll come with an optional Burmester 4D audio system that'll give you uh, surround sound and immersive audio. On top of that, active ambient lighting. Now the way to describe it is basically if you've seen Philips Ambilight, but for cars, that's what it is. So that's the simplest way to explain it to the average layman. Uh, but more than everything, uh, most of you will notice if you've driven the S Class or the EQS that the MBUX screen also has an additional display for the pass front passengers. Now, we're interestingly enough, 
um, you can consume content on that individual display, but not on the main dashboard. But Mercedes has actually developed a solution that they've tested uh, where uh, it has, it's basically a visual shield. So if the driver, through the cameras they sense, if the driver is looking on the front passenger's display, they're watching a show or playing a game, it'll fade the display's brightness so they don't see. So if they, you know, they get distracted and caught, uh, or get, get caught with, uh, you know, with seeing what the passenger is seeing. So that's interesting in a way but the thing about using entertainment apps and other things like is usually should it would be if other other cars like the tesla for example it's usually if you put the car on brake or obviously you park the car somewhere then it's available and it's built and it's integrated it's running without any issues so that's something to keep in mind and speaking of which if you get the option uh if you get the uh, software option that should be available if you want to buy it with the car uh, you get access to third-party apps including tiktok Angry Birds, weirdly enough, uh, WebEx by Cisco, and Zoom, along with the Vivaldi browser, which I've never heard of, but it's a probably competing browser to Chrome and Microsoft Edge. So that's pretty interesting in a way. And if you're using Zoom or WebEx, you can connect. You can use the cameras in the car itself, which is pretty awesome to say the least. Uh, to say the least, let's just say that. Also, it comes with AI-powered routines and mood uh, modes. So you can press a button, and it can change lots of settings of the car right then and there. So let's say you want to have a chill mode, you can build that up and you click it and it sort of changes the seat position, changes the lights. So that's pretty awesome in a way. And uh, again, also comes with quote unquote energizing comfort, which uh, helps affected passengers to leave their symptoms, which is interesting. And uh, oh, it prevents motion sickness. That's pretty interesting. And um, and also a thermotronic automatic climate control um, and digital wind control. This is an optional extra that's written in the press release. So that's something to keep in mind. And this is all in the Mercedes E-Class that's going to be coming out this coming year, the, the coming model year, the 24 model, uh, the E-Class and the EQE 2024 spec. So if you are looking to buy an E-Class, do keep that in mind. And yes, uh, unlike Tesla or Porsche or Porsche or Tesla, other major car brands where the apps like TikTok and Zoom are built in and pre-installed from the get-go, and let's say mobile data is optional. With Mercedes, uh, the apps and the mobile data functionality is an option. You have to get that spec'd out in your if you want to get it in your E-Class. But it's a pretty cool function uh, that's there in a way. Oh, and um, it's written here that uh, the optional, uh, the option that you have to get for the apps will get you uh, one year of free data. So that's pretty cool, uh, nonetheless. Before we go to the next uh, thing to talk about, kind of want to give you a little heads up that um, if you're using Chrome on your PC or Mac, uh, there's new, there's now a new feature you can utilize called Memory Saver and Energy Saver, and that's already available and that's on by default in Chrome. Or if you are on the older version of Chrome, then you can update to version 110 or version 110, which features uh, both saving functions. So Memory Saver, in case you missed it, is uh, basically where tabs that are kind of running but are not, uh, but are kind of inactive, are um, are snoozed uh, if they're not being used in real time, and obviously are then are go in the background. So you save up RAM right away. I was just using it over here. And I've saved up something like up to 300 megabytes of RAM, which is significant itself. And an energy saver is kind of switched on if you have a battery that's going to go uh, below 20%. Um, or you unplug your battery, um, un unplug from your charger if you have a laptop. And then it sort of, again, it disables smooth scrolling website animations and reducing video frame rates, which is significant. Now, we all know that for, for a fact that Chrome uh, takes up so much memory, to, eats up RAM for a living, and it takes a hit on battery life. So this is a nice little tidbit, uh, definitely, that will help. If you have, as I said, if you uh, don't have the latest version of Chrome, you can update to Chrome 110. That will come with these two features switched on by default, which will definitely help for a lot of users. So I've kind of talked about uh, Chrome's feature. That's uh, a new feature that's already available in the latest version. If you have a Mac or PC, do ch check it out if you can. 
But uh, moving on, uh, a pro uh, how about a prototype 5G network that you can create, run a private 5G network that you can run, and literally it's powered by a Raspberry Pi. So uh, Android Authority reports that Vodafone created a concept prototype, a device basically that's got multiple antennas, that's got um, that's got multiple. Uh, it's it's a little bo a little black box. It's got multiple antennas, and the idea is you can create a private 5G network, and it's very suitable for small businesses and households where uh, either you can create your own 5G network or you can extend the current 5G coverage that's out there in a click. Um, so it uses a Raspberry Pi 4 and a 5G compatible software defined radio board, um, an SDR. If you know, if you are a bit of a hardware engineer, you will know what software defined radios are. Uh, these are like um, computer chip, these are boards basically, computer chips and all that kind of stuff that feature, as I said, a feature um, that feature necessary radio uh, RF chips that let you tune into a whole bunch of frequencies. The software defines what it supports and what kind of bands it can tap into. You can tune into some AM and FM radio, you can go all the way to uh, C band and even 5G and 4G bands using an SDR, which is pretty cool in a way. I mean, it's very neat uh, functionality to start with. Now, this is a prototype that Vodafone has designed to make mobile private networks more more accessible to small and medium-sized businesses across Europe. And I'll also be part of their push to provide uh, this functionality to businesses because obviously uh, five, private 5G is going to be a revolution. A lot of businesses could take advantage of the cellular network that's there. The bands will definitely be available for businesses to, again, deliver high-speed data connectivity and access. But as I said, uh, for telecom providers, it'll be very useful to provide the, the, the services and, again, the overall platform and hardware to, again, make private 5G a possibility. And they can earn a lot and they can make a lot of money out of it uh, in a way. You can, again, carry it. Again, the, the it's quite a portable box. You can take it around everywhere in a way. And um, as I said, this prototype is pretty interesting. They're showing, uh, Vodafone is showing this off at the Mobile World Congress to show that it could create new uses for 5G, which is pretty cool in a way. Uh, so yeah, if you're going to Mobile World Congress, then you can enjoy it. You can see it next week. So that's pretty interesting in a way. I'll link the article in the show notes so you can read it later on and have a look. It's pretty nifty. Uh, it's pretty cool what they're doing here. So that's pretty cool nonetheless. All right, so uh, next up, uh, Sonos. So uh, The Verge has uh, obtained marketing images of some new Sonos speakers that you definitely might be looking, might want to check out if they become available. So uh, The Verge has kind of reported that, again, it's it found pictures, marketing images of the ERA 300 and ERA 100 speakers. Now these are interesting new speakers that uh, have not uh, we've not seen uh, before. Uh, to start with, the ERA 300 is basically a like successor to the Sonos 5. Um, it's going to cost apparently around $450 according to the Verge. It uh, has spatial audio support. It's got a unique design. It's basically the, this huge uh, kind of drum um, and then the side of it. And then you look at it as a Sonos speaker. It's hard to tell in photos. Again, I'll link the article in the show notes so you could see the pictures in the article. But yeah, um, it supports spatial audio like Dolby Atmos, uh, potentially from the looks of it, um, as I said. And um, that's the interesting tidbit that's stated here. Oh, both Aero speakers, the 100 and the 300, uh, come with Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, and AirPlay 2 support out of the gate, and a line-in adapter that you can get separately that will support USB-C audio and a combo adapt adapter uh, to let you plug in over Ethernet. So there's no jacks, Ethernet jacks on these, unlike previous Sonos speakers. So you have to get an adapter separately. It comes in black and white, which is pretty cool. Um, as I said, it supports Dolby Atmos, and again, is meant to be the spatial audio speaker, so it fills your room with high quality, rich audio in a way. And the Aero 100, on the other hand, uh, pretty much, is basically almost like a Sonos one, but apparently uh, you can you can run, you can connect it uh, to external sources like turntable uh, to 
uh, turn vinyl players and CD players and other audio gear inputs also uh, again coming with Bluetooth and USB-C line-in support so that's pretty cool in a way um, and interesting in the marketing photos it shows that you can plug two era 300 speakers which are the Atmos supporting speakers and it can basically be used for rare surround for Dolby Atmos so that's pretty cool in a way and according to The Verge weirdly enough uh, because Apple and Sonos don't have an agreement or deal, commercial arrangement, you cannot play Apple Music's Atmos uh, content uh, through those Sonos, new Sonos speakers potentially. So the only way to do it apparently, according to them, would be using Amazon's uh, music streaming service. So that's something to my, keep in mind. Um, but um, yeah, the other Sonos speakers like the Arc and Beam that have Atmos support, that's because there's an HDMI input so you can connect an Apple TV or a device like that and it will pip in the Atmos audio directly through HDMI. That, that's not the case with the Era 100 and 300 uh, or the other one, uh, that's to say. Now, the Era, as I said, uh, oh, and accor again, according to The Verge, uh, both speakers will finally have ability to do tu true play tuning through Android phones, unlike previously where it was only for iPhones and iPads. So that's pretty interesting. So there's quite a lot that uh, the word is basically broken out about uh, Sonos uh, speakers pretty much. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. So it's essentially a new line of speakers. Now they are quite still. Now to start with, uh, one thing I would say is that both spe one speaker is a big boombox kind of speaker like the Sonos 5 and the other one's like the Sonos 1, the iconic cylindrical uh, shaped speaker and it's pretty interesting. Now the Aero 100 sound looks interesting in that it has uh, support for USB, it has a USB-C plug at the back so you can connect it with an adapter to uh, any other audio source for input along with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi support that Sonos is known for. So. It's pretty cool what they're uh, potentially bringing here. Now, um, this is going to be a little bit more expensive than Sonos One, but that shouldn't be an issue. But as I said, if you want high quality audio, you're going to pay that kind of money for that. Uh, whereas the Era 300, apparently, according to The Verge, this is their uh, leak and all, um, it may cost around $450. So it's going to be a little less expensive than the Sonos Five, which goes for about five to six hundred dollars. That is. So yeah, so it's pretty interesting uh, that uh, we're getting new speakers from Sonos fairly soon. Uh, but yeah, don't expect Google uh, Assistant or Siri support on this uh, for now. It, it, we'll see, maybe down the road in the future in a way. But the Era 300 looks interesting in that uh, it's got the Atmos support, so it's going to be a good uh, special audio speaker uh, for a lot of people. And... Um, yeah, and as I said, if again, if you don't, uh, we don't know the sound, the audio quality out of the Aero speakers potentially, but the Sonos one is still like a good choice to get if you want a Wi-Fi speaker that has AirPlay support. Also, you can connect it to your Sonos soundbar and get uh, essentially additional surround sound. So that's something uh, to keep in mind. But as I said, pretty cool speakers if they're gonna come out, nonetheless. And finally. Um, chat GPT is being used to make books. Uh, apparently, uh, this is a report that came in Reuters uh, yesterday uh, in that uh, they've basically interviewed a whole bunch of people who, pro claim who have claimed, uh, one person specifically who's claimed to have uh, used chat GPT to write books and sell them and write on Amazon using their self-publishing tool that's definitely there uh, again, uh, which is pretty interesting. So, um, now the thing about ChatGPT has been all the hype, even I've done a kind of bonus episode, so if you want to go back and listen to what I've asked ChatGPT, you can obviously do that uh, straight after this episode. Uh, it's, again, if you already are subscribed to the podcast, you can see the previous episode if you can. But, um, as I said, uh, ChatGPT is pretty interesting in that uh, you can get it to ask and do all kinds of things, ask a whole, whole bunch of things in a way. So... Uh, the article kind of, in a way, uh, kind of, inter the writer sort of interviewed a person called Brett Sheckler who wrote a children's novel about financial, about f personal finance. So in this situation, uh, again, according to him, quote, 
Uh, the idea of writing a book finally seemed possible. I thought I can do this, which is pretty interesting. So uh, what what he did kind of is he asked Chad GPT to write a book about a squirrel who sort of <laughs> apparently written a description cruelly rendered also using AI. Uh, he asked Chad GPT to sort of write a, a little children's novel about how a squirrel uh, sort of uh, saved saved up, uh, created a piggy bank, saved money, and basically uh became the wealthiest squirrel in the forest um and basically the story goes that uh, again i can't believe ai did this but uh sammy the squirrel cruelly rendered also using ai learns from his forest friends about saving money after happening after happening to find a gold coin he crafts a acorn shaped piggy bank invests in the acorn trading business and hopes to one day buy an acorn grinding stone Sammy becomes the wealthiest squirrel in the forest, the envy of his friends, and the forest started pros- prospering, according to the book. And this is obviously this is Reuters uh, reporting. And the book, if in case you're wondering, is The Wise Little Squirrel, A Tale of Saving and Investing. Now, I, part of me believes this AI, AI wrote this, uh, interestingly. But uh, again, in case you're wondering, if you're curious, uh, you can buy this for... Three, but oh wow, it's also available at a rivaling bookstore. That's pretty interesting. In case you're wondering, it's available for three bucks through for a Kindle version and ten dollars for the actual book. And according to the actual author who wrote a prompt into ChatGPT and wrote down a whole book and even got the cover made, he made less than a hundred dollars. Um, he made a he made less than a hundred dollars writing making a book about that. So that's pretty interesting. And according to him and this is his words, I could see people making a, career, a whole career out of this, which is which is interesting, let's just say that, in a way. Uh, but again, according to the report, there are over 200 ebooks uh, in Amazon's Kindle store uh, where that's been used by ChatGPT. Now, this might be, now this is just the proper number of books, kind of, um, in a way, uh, 200, it could be more, given how easy it is for anyone to do a very complex prompt or multiple prompts and they can write down a whole book and copy paste it and then sort of again sell then publish self publish a book on Amazon and sell it and make a bit of money on the side it could be a lot it could be more than 200 it could be more than 200 at it as it is so that's pretty interesting and extraordinary but yeah um, but also there's an element of plagiarism because if you think about chat GPT it's basically been trained on endless amounts of data uh, from all over the internet and again it, it it reads from all the information from 2021 um, before and so there could be a fair bit of copying so it kind of could be bringing up whatever it, it saw from the internet so that's basically a, a interesting situation and um and also there are tutorials on tiktok and youtube you know teaching you how to um as i said um teaching you how to create a book uh, right away but as i can think of possible use cases of people jumping to chat gb to write books off you can kind of make entire cookbooks using random recipes uh self-help books um you know advice books or even things like personal finance children's novels it, Again, it's easy to do that in a way. According to Mary Rosenberger, executive director of writers group The Authors Guild, and again, this is Reuters reporting this, uh, this is something we really need to be worried about. These books will flood the market and a lot of authors are going to be out of work, which is logical if it happens to be. But AI ghostwriting is is kind of scary uh, from the looks of it. But as I said, there's probably a practical aspect to it for some people. But as I said, according to her, uh, she goes on saying, there needs to be transparency from the authors and the platforms about how these books are created or you're going to end up with a lot of low quality books. So she has a fair point. I think it needs to be clearly identified right now with Amazon. Apparently, uh, they don't have they don't require you to uh, they don't require you to label a book with saying it's been written by AI. So a lot of authors can just kind of get away with writing. Oh, I made I wrote it, but it's again been ghost written by AI. But I think honestly, platforms like Amazon, they offer a self-publishing tool and this is becoming popular in a way. Um, as I said, um, they need to obviously add in uh, a rule to identify and say that, oh, this book has been 
uh, generated using AI. the content in the book has been generated using AI or partly through AI, and I think that would be fair. But now to the interesting uh, point of view. Again, I'll leave the link to the article in the show notes so you can read it later on at your own uh, free time. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty interesting in a way. Um, do I think it's a fad or an interesting side hustle? Now, there's two sides to the the two sides to the coin. The fad part is really that there are a lot of people who are going to jump on this to sort of make a whole bunch of money and utilize it in their own benefit. And uh, it could kind of fade out. And also, I think AI tools are just going to get more sophisticated and advanced from here on out. ChatGPT really hit the touch the tip. We really are, as I've said earlier in the bonus episode, and now, and I'll say it before and I'll say it again, we're only at the tip of the iceberg with ChatGPT. There are more advanced and interesting tools popping up, and um, the AI could get pretty sophisticated. And um, so this could be a worthwhile side hustle. But if you know what how to use these tools, then it could be a cool side hustle. But as I said, um, as I said, this could also be a fad because a lot of people are going to obviously notice or catch that an AI wrote this over actual human being. Because when, when a human writes, if I write something, you could tell, uh, my, you know, where I'm going with it. Whereas AI is so perfect or really um, there might be errors or there might be errors. So unless you're an expert, you can tell. But really, if you really, really um, think about it, uh, a lot of people will probably tell that AI kind of wrote it and it could be nearly distinguishable. I would say, I would like to say indistinguishable, but you can kind of tell from a mile away or you could sense from the from the styling uh, that a, a human didn't write it and AI kind of wrote it. But to be fair, one author who has written lots of books and obviously self-published on Amazon was quick to call uh, AI written novels as dull. Uh, merit plays a part in how books are recommended to other readers. If a good book gets bad reviews because the writing is dull, then it's gonna it's quickly going to sink to the bottom. So let's just say uh, you know human writers are not going anywhere anytime soon. But as I said, we gotta keep in mind the AI could kind of be used in all kinds of use cases, and also so when it comes. To, but uh, but what I how I feel is copywriting could be a thing of the past because AI would be very good. Because AI would be really, really good at making marketing catchphrases and taglines, and even write, helping write the entire commercials and you know the 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 text subtext or really the text for an ad uh, right away. And it would be kind of generic, but as I said it can kind of learn from examples before. But as I said, I kind of feel that people there'll be a moment while people are going to be using AI uh, to make. Uh, books and all, but as I said, it'll kind of become overrated and then people will move past it. And uh, yeah, it's just, um, again, nothing to worry about really. It's, I think you can, I think authors can kind of relax and take a chill pill, uh, but it's something to keep in mind. This leads us again to the end of today's episode. Um, it's taken me a fairly long time to produce and edit and record, uh, six, seven hours in general. Uh, so yeah, uh, any, so any way you can support uh, liking or even sharing or subscribing to this podcast feed or as I say sharing it with your friends and family uh, highly highly will appreciate all your support uh, but yeah uh, what do you think of everything you've heard today uh, so far let me know I'm on Instagram Twitter and TikTok at Zaid underscore my nine nine follow me there if you can and yeah uh, as I said uh, best way to support this podcast is well subscribe to this podcast generally wherever you're listening right now, so you don't miss another episode. If you want to know more uh, about what you heard today, there's links in the show notes, uh, so do check them out uh, once again. And yeah, until next week, this is Maun signing out. Uh, Wherever you are, whatever you're up to, thank you for listening, and have a wonderful day. All right, ciao.